enjoyed uh, our lesson this morning. I wanted to make uh, a connection between what we're talking about this morning and what I'll be uh, bringing to you at this time. And uh, we were talking about uh, men's uh, uh, self-exaltation or men exalting himself above God and uh, uh, focusing on himself. And uh, Brother Aaron said now, he, he's talking about how uh, David is a forerunner in these things. And, uh, and, and this is an area where uh, David is, uh, is, is truly a forerunner. And when he, we read Psalms and his songs of praise to God where he is exalting God and, uh, and he understands that the, the position of himself in relationship to God. Uh, I had uh, been reading in Psalms, particularly the last uh, chapters, uh, 45 through the end of the book, and this is a series of psalms uh, David has written. And you'll find when you read in here that this is a place where there's no self-exaltation. This is where David is promoting God uh, in these psalms. And it's a taste, you get a taste of what men should do when they rightly see God. And as we spoke about when, men, when God is put in his right place. That's, that's, that's the way men, re this is a proper response to God. And uh, this is the very, very best of David. It's uh, something that our, uh, we see in him, and it's a, kind of a glimpse of the new man in David. It was his absolute focus, uh, God was. And there's reasons for this. In Psalms 50, 23, Whoso offereth, offereth praise glorifieth me. But uh, my uh, calling will be uh, the, just the first two or three verses of uh, Psalms 145. I will exalt thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. <laughs> now, once, like I said, Psalms 145 throughout the book this is, uh, begins a series of psalms for David, and uh, he's best known for this one, uh, Psalms 145. It's simply, a, it's entitled simply uh, Praise. It's a praise, it's a personal psalm that uh, David wrote in praise of God. And uh, we have many psalms of thanksgiving throughout the book. But this one is particularly different. Uh, and it begins, not because it begins a series of praises, and, but, uh, but this is distinctly David. We, you can read in this, uh, in this uh, psalm here, you can, you can see David. And it's exceptional because it captures uh, an, uh, a, a, a man's heart that's been given over to God. It totally belongs to him. It's, you can read it and you can see this man here, he has seen God. And he he is he understands the Lord, and in this in this regard, it's it's, uh, it's an outstanding psalm, particularly when you consider the light by which David wrote this. Now David has a few he has some things he sees about God. He sees God's salvation, his willingness to save, and he sees God's mercy and his goodness and his greatness. And and even in his day, when so uh, even in our day, when so much more of these things have been opened up to us of God. His greatness and goodness and mercy, but just a little glimpse of day of seeing mercy and good and God's greatness in David's day was enough to transform this man, and he was able to write these exceptional songs of praise. They were, they were tremendous. Uh, he knows who God is. He recognizes the things of God. And he's paid attention to how God has worked in his life, and he's and he's made a he's made a point to note a record of what God has done in the past. He's he's paid attention, and he's made it a point to. To, uh, to see these things. And that's why he's able to open up uh, uh, why God needs to be admired, why, why he admires God, and why, why he worships God. Now, the word extol uh, is, is used rather sparingly in the Scriptures. I didn't realize it's only used four times, and three of these times are by David, and that's it. And then uh, the other person, uh, an unlikely person, was King Nebuchadnezzar used that word, remember? Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise, extol, and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. That's in Daniel 4. And this is, uh, this is a testimony of a man uh, when he's in his right mind, uh, after God gave him a right mind. A testimony to, uh, to what a right mind in God will declare in, uh, about men who walk in pride and have had to see God for who he is. Uh, then you, you can, when people don't, you can see the reverse of this. When men don't extol and praise God and honor God, we know these men are not in their right mind, are they? And you know, every day 
we're surrounded by men, and you you got to think this way about it. You're surrounded by people who are not in their right mind, brethren. Uh, now, David, of course, testifies that I'm, I'm in my right mind because he sees God, a God of truth and judgment. I will extol thee, my God. Now, there's in this psalm and just these three verses, all we're going to talk about is there's three levels of praises that, that David will uh, graduate to, and uh, there's there's a uh, it's it's a greater degree of thankfulness, and uh, as he becomes more aware of God, his 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 praise and his thankfulness reaches a a, a higher note, so to speak. And uh, this is David's personal, like I said, this is David's personal uh, praise to God, and he wants to praise God, he wants to extol God, and he wants to bless Him, and he wants to do it. You know, and and David wants to do this for all eternity. In this psalm, he says, this is something that he, forever and ever, he's going to do in eternity. Uh, eternity. Four times in two verses, David says, I will. This is an opposite to the I wills of Lucifer that we mentioned earlier this morning. These, were, these are David's I wills. And he says, I will bless uh, thy name. Now, David wants to bless God. And uh, he wants to bless the name of the God. And, you know, how can a man bless God, you ask? How can, a, how can a man bless God? And what about a man's desire to, to bless God? That's just astounding. You know, when I, I've heard uh, men bless God, we bless thy name. And, and for a long time, it, it didn't throw me, but I, 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 it was a peculiar thing because we don't hear it. I've never heard it much. And my dad said, that's not good. But uh, particularly Brother Gene has enlightened me on this. I bless God. And it's a kind of phrase that comes with a high reverence, I, I would think. And it's a deep sense. It's, a, it's when you have a deep sense of God and uh, comes out of respect and honor to Him. Amen. We bless God. And this is when you enter into it. We bless God in the energy of our own, our own uh, desire and our own will and our own purpose. I think this is it's got what it means. It's just when our whole heart is lifted up to God. We want to bless God. Our mind is full of thoughts of Him, and we praise God. Now, it's conceivable that a man, uh, even Nebuchadnezzar, could praise God for his truth and judgment and, uh, and greatness. And he even extolled God for this. But to bless God, that's, uh, I think that's something that's is, is truly reserved for the saints to do. Uh, we, can, we can desire to bless God, and we can come up to this higher place where we can actually want to bless him and uh and honor him in this way it's uh it's the saints you know that really extol and praise god and bless him this is reserved for us to do and uh you know god opens up his hand and he uh provides and satisfies all living things he feeds all living things the psalm says but uh, this is a very base level of understanding and, and praising God, but see, the saints can get beyond that and, and actually want to bless God's names. We, our lives will not be a contradiction because we're living in exaltation and rejoicing in God, you see, when it, it comes from our heart. Now, we let the world observe our gatherings and our meetings, and it's a testimony that we honor Him and we bless Him. For his exceeding greatness, David says, and his absolute goodness, and his mercy, and his unsurpassable glory. We, we bless God, and this is the way we praise his name. David says, let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever, but only the saints will do this. There's a variety of things men can pretend to do. They can pretend uh, to, to pray. They can pretend to talk of God's goodness and his greatness. And But when it comes to extolling God and praising God and honoring Him in this way. Uh, only the saints will do it. Man just can't seem to pull it off. There's a, there seems to be an artificial sound if it doesn't come from the heart. Uh, this kind of praise, this kind of blessing to God and this extolling God, this is the thing that uh, uh, ri uh, helps rise us above our trials and our struggles in life. And these are the evidences of the saints exclusively to them. They're brought about by our awareness, actually, of our deliverance. You know, we have been delivered. We're people that's been delivered, right, Brother Ricky? Yeah, amen. It delights my heart. We'll be in the assembly, and it delights my heart when I when we when when we got brethren 
preaching and teaching and they're, they're opening up the Lord and they're reminding us of our deliverance. And then you'll hear one of the brethren just, just praise God, see, because this is what happens when, you, when you've been brought to these things. You just out, out right out and, and you'll just praise God because you're, you know what he's done. Amen. Uh, this is evidence of true adoption. When, when you hear these kinds of things, and, they, and they, they, they make you praise God in yourself when you hear it. There's a difference between, uh, between trying to interpret Scripture and trying to open up the text. And, uh, and that's what I'm going to do this morning. I'm going to try to open up the text. I want to get up here and try to interpret Scripture to you. Uh, and the Spirit, it's His job through our uh, teaching and our preaching and our declaring Him is to open up these things to us that they have deeper meaning and understanding in our lives. The call of the brethren to consider the blessing of God's greatness and goodness and mercy and that we should extol him and we should honor him in our praises and to bless his honorable name. Now a person who is familiar with David uh, will not question at all David's enthusiasm for God and his zeal to praise his name. This is, it comes out very evident in his, in his works. But you know, some may wonder, though, at David's nonstop call for praise for God. It may be a wonderment to them. Why, why is David so uh, on, on this so much? And, uh, it, and we know it's because David saw the true nature of God and his greatness and goodness and his greatness and mercy and his kindness. But there's a, I think there's a particular incident or an, an event in David's life where we can probably trace a lot of this. And it was, uh, it was about the time... When David was told, God has put away your sin. How about this? When David was aware of his deliverance. This is when David, we were alluded to this morning, this is when David had uh, Uriah the Hittite killed and David took his wife. And you know, you remember the rest of the story. When Nathan confronted David, and David, uh, Nathan confronted David with the story of a poor man who had one lamb and then about the rich man who took his lamb and slaughtered him to feed his uh, wealthy friends. Now, David didn't immediately see uh, Nathan's meaning in this because, see, what David done, uh, he did it in secret. See, nobody was to know about this. But, see, but God told Nathan about it. And God said, you have despised me, and you have despised my commandments. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Now, David was severely punished for this, but God allowed David to live another day. He allowed David to repent. He allowed David to enjoy living a life that was pleasing to God. And his poems, his song, his poems and songs are evidences of this, I believe. In verse 1, David says, I will bless thy name forever and ever. In verse 2, he repeats, Every day will I bless thee. I will praise thy name forever and ever. David's faith his spiritual intuition speaks to him uh, about an immor immorality, Im immortality, because he says, I, every day, forever and ever, I will praise thy name. So David has an awareness. This is something that you start in this life, and this is something that will continue into the next life. Brethren, as I considered this, I thought about some things. Even now that we have, we, uh, when one day when we ascend to glory, we will leave our praying behind. We won't need to pray then. We will leave our faith here too because we, our faith will be fulfilled. We won't need our faith. And our hope, it will be something that will have been, uh, been uh, bore fruit. Our, our hope will. But our praising to God, now we'll take that with us. Let us learn now, okay, how to praise God every day so that when we reach eternity, it will be just a sweeter continuation of something we've already begun to do and to praise God and to extol Him praising and to bless his name. I want to do that. I want to learn how to extol God by the way I live and my manner of behavior and, and, and to praise him and to actually get to a point where I can bless God. And I can, it's, my, it's desiring all my goodwill toward him. So this morning we're going to leave here and we're going to be in a better position to do this because it's been my observation that each day God gets us to a point that we can do this better and better. Praise His name for what He's done for us here. Uh, we'll pray, and we'll turn it right back over to Sister uh, Murphy.